So what sort of a system have I put in? Well, it's a similar system to my vertical growing towers in that it's like a hydroponics, aeroponics, aquaponics sort of thing. I never know what to call these things. But this one is horizontal and it would most commonly be known as an NFT system. Plants suspended in a tube, the roots can come out in the oxygen and water saturated air and a thin layer of water runs underneath them. I've seen people using these in the US, in the warmer states and also in Australia. There's quite a few people use them down there. It always seems to be in warm conditions so I've made a one that's small enough so that it can be used in the greenhouse in the winter to grow lettuce and other leafy veg and then in the spring as it gets too hot in there to grow those it can just be taken out and the outlet can be put into a barrel the likes of that red thing behind us and it's good having that source of water there because it's fed from the filters from my pond so that should contain all the nutrition that the plants need i can just set the pipes up running away from that pump the water from the container through the pipes and just have a totally self-circulating system right enough of my nonsense let's get in and have a look and because it's a bit noisy in there i'll show you it running and then i'll turn it off to give you a good description of what it is and how it was made So that's my vertical system here, fed from the tank of water here. I've got four four inch tubes and it's been pretty much just cleaned out for the winter. I will be growing things in there, I just haven't decided what yet, although I do have some things there, seedlings coming away in a propagator. There's all sorts of things in there so I will be experimenting further with that. As I say, that did work pretty well. Put one tomato left, which is this trailing tomato. As you can see, it's got three or four, which are just about ready to pick. Okay, so I've got it switched off. That's a bit better. Hopefully, you'll be able to see the pumps in there. We've got one in there and one there. And these are the small pumps that I sell on the website. They draw air in at the point where they draw water in, they shred the air and they feed an oxygenated stream of water up through these pipes. And that shredding of the air is very important because I don't have an air pump in this system. And by, you know, really mixing the air in with the water very well, it'll enable the water coming out of here to be ridiculously well oxygenated. And that is really important because inside of here, well, let's have a look. Yeah, inside of here, you've got the water right in the bottom. You can barely reach it there. All of the air inside of here needs to be saturated with water and also with air. It's got to be a good environment in here for the roots. If it gets anaerobic, the roots don't do well and therefore the plants don't do well. Then I'll just turn one of those pumps on and hopefully you'll be able to see the tiny little bubbles that are shredded in with the water being pumped up here. See that constant stream of tiny little bubbles being fed up that clear pipe? Look at all those little bubbles. That is really, really well oxygenated water being fed up here. And then when it gets to the splitter, it gets held back a little bit. Some of the bubbles join up with other ones. But you can see there's still quite a lot of small bubbles coming in to feed this system. And on the other side you can see it as well. Okay, so that's our pump pretty small it generally would be used for hydroponic sort of projects and so on but in an aquarium they're also very good as well we've got the mains cable coming out here and the airline coming out here and the air gets drawn in shredded with the water 
and then it gets spat out through the 10 millimeter pipe uh, I'm not sure what that is in inches unfortunately 10 mil is well it's one centimeter so oh god I don't know what that is in inches but it's 10 millimeters internal diameter pipe anyway gets fed up there runs up we've got a 10 millimeter t-piece two half inch taps which is 12 and a half mil as you can see I've had to stretch the pipe over there but it does stretch over no need for any clips or anything it all fits together really well then it just feeds in to these four inch pipes now these rubber ends are four inch down to two inch and the two inch pipe that I've used is two inch solvent pipe I do realize I'm mixing imperial and metric measurements <laughs> Uh, what four inches four inches would be 110 mil so that's 110 mil pipe this is solvent pipe but you could use um, push fit pipe if you wanted to these fittings will still clamp down onto that no problem so it's four inch to two inch that's 110 down to 50 millimeters and that feeds down to two inch or 50 millimeter solvent weld pipe but this isn't actually solvent welded together so there's no glue at all in here it's just pushed together it's not under any pressure so it doesn't leak it's pretty much the same story at the other end where it feeds back into the container got four inch down to two inch and that all joins to this common pipe here the t-piece which feeds straight back into the container of water the holes that I've drilled in here I think are 45 millimeters uh, that's just less than two inches because we've got a two inch pot which needs to fit in and not drop through that hole and if I zoom in you'll see how that fits in there you go there's no chance of that falling through the hole now this is what I've used in the vertical towers this is just a standard two inch perforated pot for hydroponics and so on but I'm going to experiment with this stuff. I saw this in somebody else's video. Unfortunately, I can't remember the name though. So if you're watching this, props to you. And sorry that I can't link to your channel because I can't remember who the hell it was. It was ages ago. I saw this idea and I'll tell you exactly how these are made. And those plant holders were made using one of these things, which is, well, I used to know it was a woggle, which is like a noodle sort of a thing that kids would use when they're learning to swim. So to make one of those little plant holders, all we do is cut roughly an inch off the end. And obviously that's too big to fit into the hole. The actual hole through there is far too big for a little cutting. It's just going to fall through. So what we do, cut straight down there to the middle. And this part's a little bit different to what I saw the guy do in the video. But what I do, I cut about... A strip of about a quarter of an inch down there like that so that's our little strip there and then I would chop the top out roughly inch and a quarter or 32 millimeters back from our initial cut and remove it now the video I saw had the guy cutting a smaller piece out of here but I actually just throw that away because in here we've got something we can just bend in to hold the to hold the cutting of the plant and then we fold that in like so and that fits into the hole beautifully and holds our plant securely but gently so there's the bit we fold it in there you go And that just plugs in there our plant would stick up through here just like it is with this cut and I've just put in here now this is looking pretty poor because I've literally just cut it off a plant and put it in but I'll see how that goes in the next few days I don't know if there's any advantages between using this system and this system so what I'm gonna do is run this half of the system with these two pipes using the traditional baskets and this half of the system using the DIY foam method. Now you can buy things that hold plants in this sort of situation off the shelf, but I mean, that's as good as anything, you know? And it's gonna last for years as well. 
And the good thing is you haven't got a loose piece of foam in here that could possibly drop out here and cause blockages or whatever, you know? Very simple. So there you go everybody, that's the system that I'm going to be trialling this winter. I may put lights over it, I've got some 2x2 two two timbers left and plenty of LED lights so if it needs lights I can install them. It is pretty light in here now, especially seeing as we've taken two trees out as well. They're the two stumps. I've left them high because I'm going to cover them in pig netting and grow like cultivated brambles up them. But that's made a hell of a difference. It's just opened it right up to the sun. Really made this greenhouse, you know, very, very usable now. So I'm sure we'll get enough light in. But as I say, if I don't, it's easy enough just to put lights over the top of it. But there you go. That video was probably about 10 times longer than I intended it to be. But at least I've showed you that new system now. So I welcome comments from anybody all around the world. If you've used these systems or if you know anybody who've used these systems, just let me know how you got on with them. I, I do see plenty of videos, as I say, from other countries, but especially in the UK and Europe, if you've used these, I want to hear about it because it's very much just an experiment. But I'm hoping it goes well and I will keep you informed as to how the system does. Thanks for watching. See you next time.